How are we doing this Martin from Guidance for Life? In this little video we're going to just take a look at our garden that we set up last uh, July. It's the no dig garden made with a digger ironically and the video of the making of is actually on our YouTube channel too so I'll link that through at the end of this video and we're also going to have a quick look at the greenhouse as well. A quick shout out to all of you that came to the seed swap two weeks ago. Uh, thanks a million and uh, we all made we all had a good time and we made some great connections and everyone went home with some plants and seeds as well. Just to let you know, we still have just a few willow cuttings left over. Uh, if you want to have a look at our website for those, you can. And we also have a homesteading workshop day coming up as well. And there's also some plants and bits and pieces available on our website. We'd highly appreciate your support. Our new garden is here. We've cleaned it up a little bit already, but it's definitely still an establishment. But we have basically planted very little this year, except for a few um, onions and some garlic. Everything else was already here from last July. I was just um, doing a bit of uh, moonlight gardening here last night and actually weeding out this bit here. Kind of going to try and do a little bit at a time. Just one corner of the garden every day. And if I spend an hour at it every day, I figured after maybe a week or so, I'll be done here for the year, almost. And you can see the chives here. They were sort of shaded out by our Swedes that we're going to seed here, so we got rid of those. And we are keeping the Sutherland kale one more time for it to seed. It self-seeded last year also, and a lot of you guys probably got the seeds. We're sending out free seeds with every order placed on our website. Celery, and this is the elephant garlic, and it has actually got some scapes already so those could be picked and anyway, I will pick those when I'm ready probably do it tomorrow morning for breakfast and fry them in the frying pan for a minute really nice that way you definitely want to prevent your garlic plant from putting all its energy into the flower head and making seeds because you want to keep the energy down low in the bulb which is actually underground a little bit they do look like leeks and that's for a simple reason, because all garlic are in the leek family. Especially the elephant garlic, because it's huge. These are some elephant garlic that were planted a little later. So those were planted um, just recently there, about two months ago. So they'll, they'll still produce this year though. We also have plenty of lemon balm. And you can see here, the grasses are taken over a little bit over here, so I better take care of those. And the nettles too. At the very least, chop them back before they go to seed. And I don't mind having some nettles at the periphery of the garden, but I don't want a whole acre of nettles. Oh yes, these are the Egyptian walking onions. Not, not this. That's just, that's just grass. These here, that's the Egyptian walking onions. So they'll actually make little bulblets or flower heads and make bulb heads on the top. And then they kind of tip layer and multiply that way. So you can end up with a patch of them. And this part of the garden here has not been weeded. And uh, unfortunately the grasses have taken over the path anyway. So I'm going to take care of that and spread wood chips here. Um, yeah, let's take a look here too. This is the chard that was planted last year. It's going to seed now, so I'm probably going to have to replant it 
We have to start new charred plants in the greenhouse from seed. It's been a very productive plant, uh, although during the cold winter there wasn't much charred to eat for us or for the animals. But you can see during the growing season, even early on, it is just producing an abundance of food. Absolutely amazing. Here we have a mixture of onions and potatoes and willows, actually. Long-term willows will be just um, the crop of this part of the garden anyway. So we want to turn this into a bit of a shelter belt for our towards the back of our garden. Uh, which way will we go? We have a choice actually. It's a bit of a maze. It's a bit of a labyrinth even. You can go different directions in the garden, although the paths are not very well defined yet because we haven't spread wood chips on most of them yet. These are thyme plants. It's English winter. Going to flower now, which is great for the insects, but also you can eat those. Bit of bindweed coming through. I'm just going to come through here with a little um, small little hand shovel and just um, try to root up as much of the root as I can. We've also interplanted a lot of berry bushes in between too. This is the Portuguese kale going to seed. I don't mind, I'll let it. And even if it um, doesn't produce its own seed that's viable, I don't mind it actually pollinating our red Russian kale a little bit, which is right here. A bit more celery here are some gooseberries. Wow, they have grown a lot. Those were just rooted cuttings that I stuck in the ground just before the winter and they're grown strong. Definitely going to get lots of softwood cuttings off those too. A bit of uh, Jerusalem artichokes. Those are still available as a tuber actually on our website. So last chance to get your Jerusalem artichoke patch established this year. Definitely a great plant. Uh, also known as the poor man's potato in the Second World War. And now it's being uh, served in top restaurants in the world. It is a tuber sunflower and it grows to about 10 feet tall, maybe 3 meters and um, it makes little sunflowers at the very top at the end of the season and the uh, tubers can be harvested any time in the winter or left for to grow again another year definitely one of our favorite crops is the jerusalem artichoke you can see here the siberian kale is also going to seed i don't want the kale actually to spread seeds everywhere so i'm going to take away all of the ones kind of in between we did plant a lot of uh, kale, any kind of kale, mostly red Russian kale because we just had a lot of seedlings for it in between uh, where we had spaces before the winter just to grow something in the new garden and um, now it all ended up going to seed but we can feed that to our animals and the rabbits and the chickens love them and the ducks and so now we're back to here I wanted to show you the Taunton Dean kale, which is our new favorite kale. It used to be the Portuguese kale, although it does produce seed. This one does not. This one only produces, uh, it does never produce flowers, so it never produces seed. So the only way to propagate it is actually by cuttings. But the reason why we love it is because it is super hardy. Not, maybe not this one. <laughs> this one needs to be pulled up. I think that's definitely What's that called? Hogweed, isn't it? Um, so, so the Taunton Dean kale is actually really decorative, as you can see. And it also is super hardy in the winter. We found that it's actually just as hardy as the Red Russian kale, if not even hardier. And it's prolific. Once you have it, you can just take cuttings off it and stick it in the ground everywhere. And then you'll have it forever. Ideally grow it in different places, like everything else. Lemon balm. In case one of your patches doesn't do too well. So you're always better to better off to um, grow the same vegetable or the same plant in a couple of different places. You can see here the grass has taken over here. I had that covered with plastic for a while last year, but it didn't um, make the difference. It has come back. So this, um, I'll just have to take care of it anyway. These are uh, orphrey or the bulbous leek, which will be available 
uh, on our website in July. So keep an eye out. Oh yes, there's also the giant puppies, the cottage puppy or giant oriental puppy it's known as. And I can't wait to see them. We already had a couple of them flowering in a different spot. But there's a lot of them here in one place. Those are only one year old plants and you can see they've already taken over quite a large area. We have comfrey growing here too in different spots. And there's some grasses. Those are easy to pull up. I mean, those, that's a leak patch actually. And I knew that there was a problem with, um, with the grass there. I just couldn't have covered them with, I couldn't have covered it with plastic because we had leeks planted there. So now I'm going to do that after harvesting the leeks. Look at the size of this, this uh, celery stock, huge. Not sure if it would be still edible, but we have plenty of it anyway. So celery is really good for reducing the blood, blood pressure. It's very good for the body. You can also juice it or put it in smoothies. So we have different types of rhubarb here, Glasgow's Perpetual and the um, Victoria. Some little plants grown here. That's the elderberry. It's a different, it's actually a different elder, an ornamental one. It's really nice. And we finally have grown huge leeks for the first time, so very successfully now. Those have grown for 10 months now, since last July. And yeah, we put those in soups and they're lovely. And this is a great mullen and great it is. It's huge, it's about a square meter. Although there is another couple of plants here, but this particular plant is huge. Look at the size of the leaves. And um, we still have seeds for great mullen too. I mean, everyone that orders um, from our website will get a free packet of great mullen seeds. Yeah, and we also have some marshmallow plants still here. They're only small yet. Those are a year old now. And that's going to grow massive in the first, after, after a couple of years, it's going to take over this whole space here. And it's really a nice plant to have. It has lovely flowers and it's also got medicinal uh, leaves and roots as well. Here's the comfrey, which is a great plant for compost tea. So you make liquid feed for your plants, but also for the insects, as you can see. The bees love it. Yeah, so this patch here, this was actually an older part of the garden, this little area here. And um, that was used to be known as the Bumblebee Island because it looked like a bumblebee from the sky. But also um, after that it was called Brassica Island, so, which it certainly still is. We have different types of kale here, but we have also interplanted some trees as well. Some smaller trees like elderberry and some buddleia and a bit of a bit, few bits and pieces. And this bit here definitely needs to be taken care of. Creeping buttercup and nettles in the middle and grasses. So that's something that I'll be working on shortly. You can see the pat is nice with the wood chips. So we're going to renew all the paths all around now. While it's raining out here, we might as well have a quick look in the greenhouse. This is our compost that we just got delivered. And this is the greenhouse. You can see a few yakons coming up here. They're only small yet. Hopefully we're going to get a few more. We almost lost all of our yakons and okas this year. If any of you guys have any spare yakon crowns, please let me know. We'll happily swap you. So these tomato plants need to go in the ground as well. We have to prepare an area for that in the other greenhouse. Some broadleaf thyme. A bit of corn and generally speaking some vegetables and some perennial plants as well, medicinals and flowers. Usually kale is always first to pop up. Some Chinese rhubarb as well, which is an unusual plant. Some courgettes. I have a feeling we're going to have too many courgettes. Usually we either end up with no courgettes at all or too many for the year. 
I'm sure you have the same <laughs> issue sometimes. The Swedes coming up. You can look at the figs here. And there's quite a few of them. Goji berry bush in between, and a kiwi, and some grapes. A bit more space to fill yet on our tables. And once the yakons have gone out, we can start another batch of other seeds midsummer. Don't ask me what we're going to do with all these tomato plants, but if any of you guys are local here to this common town, please let us know. We'll happily give you some of those. As I said, we nearly lost all of our okas and yakons this year. So uh, we got some spare okas off a friend of ours that is local here. Thanks, Colm. So we're going to grow those on and hopefully multiply them to the point where we can offer them to you guys again later in the year. So thanks for watching the video and don't forget, like and subscribe and uh, go to our website and uh, take a look at our online shop. We have a no dig gardening course online as well. We also have a homesteading workshop day coming up as well. So let us know if you have any questions uh, in the comments below. Thanks a million. I'll see you the next one. Bye bye.